I think most generative art is a scam. It has the same, it has the same like fundamental weaknesses like the PFP market in that like these have like the supply friction is like non-existent. There's a handful of artists out there in generative space that really know how to make generative art. And then there is far more artists that are know how to kind of pick and choose a few elements of other people's generative code that happens to look nice. So you end up with a ton of projects that are kind of just like, kind of like assembled like Frankenstein and then turned into something that looks good and they're like, cool, here's a generative piece. But you don't know that if you're just getting into the space, you end up with just a lot of people just kind of like r rampantly speculating on something with a smaller collection size. I mean, these are typically a thousand, right? But still, there's gonna be so many art blocks projects that get pumped out because you can create a thousand of these where you spend the time to create like one, one of one. There, so. This just runs into the same supply issues that PFPs do. No, I, I, in I totally, six months, a year, like it inevitably hits a wall where supply is so easy to create. These things can't hold value long term, except for the very few that are actually like done properly. And it's really tough to tell what's done properly unless you really dive in and kind of educate yourself about the space, who's coding what, who's using their own work. Most of these are not, are not what they appear to be. Yeah, so. you, you can kind of tell like a good PFP versus a shitty PFP. With generative art, it's like, okay, what am I looking at here? And because of that, I think most generative art is a scam. It's like, okay, I can pump out this stuff. No one's going to know if it's good or not. And, you know, with art blocks, like I like art blocks, don't get me wrong. But it's basically target for generative art with the exception of like Fidenzas and Squiggles.